Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to get one switch to operate two lights. And what I mean by that is I'm going to put this bottom circuit in parallel with this circuit. Which means this circuit is going to be disconnected and it's going to be connected directly to this circuit. So that means I can now use a two-way switch instead of a three-way switch. Now why would I want to do this? Okay, in this particular circuit I've got a kitchen light, kitchen light and a pantry light. Now this pantry light does not need to have its own circuit. It can come on with this particular light. So when I switch when I switch this light on, it must also switch on this circuit. So I'm going to be using this switch to control two circuits. I'm going to therefore remove this circuit. I'm going to join it to an already present circuit, which will then mean that this switch here becomes disconnected and unused. And therefore, I will also be changing the light switch to a two-way light switch. If you're wondering why the light switches are horizontal instead of vertical, it's because there is another sister light switch on the other side of the room because you can switch on the light from here or you can switch on the light from the other light switch on the other side of the room. At the moment I don't have a horizontal two-way switch so I'm just going to be using a vertical switch but if you're wondering why this is vertical and this is horizontal now you know. Right so I'm just going to show you what the three switches do. You can see this light is coming on that is the pantry light. You can see that is the main light as you can see when I switch it on you can see the ground is lighting up the light is overhead. So I want it to be that when I switch the main light on, it'll also switch on the pantry light. So it'll be something like this. And the light at the top is just another light which is behind the camera and you're not seeing it, but that is another light in this kitchen. Right, the first thing you need to do is actually go and switch off your electricity. Right, so you must trip your main circuit breaker. Now in some houses you'll see there's an earth leakage. It's important that you trip the main circuit breaker because some of the light circuits you might find are not protected via earth leakage. Now I'm unscrewing the faceplate. Right, so I'm just going to make sure the power is off. I'm just using my meter. And all I'm going to do is just check that there is no live voltage here. So I'm just going to put my one lead on the earth point. I can see earth there. And there I can see the power is off here. Right. Now as you can see there's a red wire here which is going to this switch, this switch, this switch. You see this is common to all of them. That is your live wire when you close the switch you are closing the live onto that which is going to your light fitting. All I need to do is remove this one circuit and put this wire onto this one because this is the wire which is going to the main kitchen light. Now if you're wondering why there's another light here the reason is is because this light can be switched on from two different places. So don't worry about that. In this in your case you'll probably find there'll only be two terminals of your switch used. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open this now Right, so that is my pantry light. I can actually remove this light switch completely. There we go, I'm removing it. And I'm loosening this live over here. And you can see I'm actually removing that switch because I no longer need it. This switch over here is going to do both lights, pantry and main. Now because I'm going to make these vertical and not horizontal, I'm actually going to remove it out of this plate. And I'm just opening that to extend it a bit. Towards the end of the video, I do have a tutorial explaining this in more detail, showing you diagrams. So if you're not following what I'm doing here, just go towards the end of the video and you'll see an additional explanation. Right, so let's recap here. This is the one kitchen light, this is the other kitchen light, this is the pantry light, and now the pantry light needs to be doubled up to the kitchen light. Now I just have to determine in which way I want the switch to be when the pantry light goes on. Remember that this is a two-way switch, 
And the way I can work that out is I put my multimeter on continuity, which means if it's a short, it makes that sound, and then I just determine. Right, so now it is in the closed position there, then that means this must be open. And if I toggle the switch again, this is closed, and that's open. Okay, so it must be at the bottom. So that means when I go like that, the, the pantry light will go on. So all I need to do now is open this one over here and join it to this blue wire. Right, so there we go. I've now got the pantry light and the main kitchen light on this particular circuit. Right, when it comes to the earthing of the switch, if you have a look at the back here on this faceplate, you can see there's an earth point there. Your earth wire would be inserted in there and you're tight in there. In this particular installation, it's already been earthed at the back and I'll show you. If you have a look there at the back, there's the earth wire fastened onto that uh, bracket at the back. Now because this fastens onto these screw holes over here and it's fastened with metallic screws, and then this fastens on top. All of this would also be earth because they are all fastened using screws. You see that fastens to that and then the face plate fastens to that. So you could do an earth test but you'll find that that earth is also contacting here through the screws, the metallic screws. But in terms of earthing, always try earth as close to where the user would touch the surface. So in this case, this would be a better earth because this is closer to where the user would be touching the faceplate. Now if your light switch looks something like this, which is completely plastic, even when I flip it around, you'll see there is no place here to earth it because this is plastic. So in this case, you wouldn't have to earth the cover of this light switch. Okay, so now it's time to put this back together. Right, so there I have the one kitchen light, which you're not seeing, and then I have my pantry and main light now connected to this one switch, and I'll show you what it looks like now. Right, so there are the two switches. The first switch is just for the light, which is behind the camera, and I'll show you that coming on now. Right, switch on the first switch, please. Okay, so that is switching on a light that's above the camera. Okay, now we're going to switch that first switch off can switch it off all right now we're going to switch on the second switch which is the one that should switch on both the main light and the pantry light so switch on the second switch right and there you can see both lights have come on the light in the pantry and the main kitchen light switch off the second switch switch on the first switch right there we go all right, so let's summarize what was done. We had three switches. They all shared the same positive or live. Now this one went to a light. This one went to a light. This one went to a light. This was pantry. This was light the main. And this was light the side. So this was the pantry light, the main light, and the side light. And... All of these are neutrals which are connected together and they go back to the supply like that. So that was switch one, two and three. So when you close this switch that side light came on, the one that was out of the view of the camera. The middle switch was the one that main light and when you close it the main kitchen light came on. And the bottom third switch when you close it the pantry light would come on. But I wanted to join that one and that one to this one switch. So all I did is I did this. That's all I did. So when I closed light switch number two, current would flow all the way like that. When that got closed, it would flow there and there and completing the circuit. So therefore, I just bypassed that switch completely. I removed it. This one switch then was able to allow current to flow to the pantry and to the main light. So I converted the three switch system to the two switch system with one of the switches having a parallel load. Here is another three switch system. As you can see, I've got three light switches there. 
Right, now if you have a look, switch one, two, three. Now, if you notice, the red wire is common to all three switches. Look, there's the red wire, and then it is jumping from that switch to that switch, and jumping from that switch to that switch. So the red wire is the live wire, and as you flick the switch, you allow the current to flow from there to there, or from there to there, or from there to there. As you can see, I've got three brown wires, and each time I close a switch, I am therefore closing a circuit. Switch on two lights, all I would do is remove this one brown wire, and I would just join it to that brown wire over there. That would mean that this one switch is now going to let two lights go on when I switch this light on, this switch on. Right, so here's a light switch, here's a light switch, and while we're here, I just want to show you the principles here. As you can see, I put my meter there, it's on continuity. Continuity means it measures a short circuit, short circuit, right, and I put it there, and watch what happens when I depress the switch. Right. Current can flow. Current has to stop. Current can flow. Current has to stop. Now, if you have a look at this switch, you can see that this switch has got an extra pole there. This one's got two terminals and this has got three terminals. So I just want to show you if I go here and here. So that's an open circuit. Current cannot flow. Closed circuit. Open circuit. But here on this one, what happens is you can flip the switch because it works in either orientation. Current can flow. Current is stopped. Current can flow. Current is stopped. But now look, when I do this, current can flow, but there, current is stopped. Current can flow. Current is stopped. Now if I do that, current can flow. Current is stopped. Current can flow. Current is stopped. All that's allowing me to do is to just allow another switch to be connected to this. If that's too confusing, don't worry. The, the point of the video was just to show you that you can use one switch to control two circuits. Now, just a note, if you are going to be using one switch to control two circuits like I did, make sure that you do not exceed the rating of the switch. For example, this switch is a 16 amp switch and the loads are well below one amp each. These are LED tubes and this is a small LED light. So I'm well within the range of the switch maximum opening capacity of 16 amps. Now, if your switch looks something like this and you wanted to convert two to one, meaning one switch would switch two circuits and all you would do is you would take the wire that was there and join it to that and you take the wire that was there and join it to that. All right, thanks for watching. Cheers.